it in, Nate. Y'all, y'all get a... Hey, everybody. It is July 26th, the beautiful Wednesday evening here on Gorodok, and we are Squad Ops. I'm CMYK Matter, and tonight we're going to be running Operation Rising Giant. We'll go over what that is here in a little bit. But before that, you should know a little bit about Squad Ops, who we are, what we do. We are a community that runs One Life Operations in the game Squad. You can check us out at squadops.gg, get all that good info, check us out on Discord. Join us, talk to us, hang out with us, be our friends. But for now, sit back, get some popcorn, relax, get to listen to me run my mouth all night and talk about what's going on here on this beautiful map of Gordok as we run Rising Giant. But before we get into that, I've got a little special guest here with me before we get started. None other than the Muff Bandit. What's going on, Muff? Oh, not so much. How are you? Doing really well, man. I'm I'm happy to be out here on Gordok. Uh, I'm sad you're not here, you know, well, commentating I'm, along my side. But... I will be here in spirit. <laughs> he will be here in spirit. You love Gordok. This is your favorite map, as I understand it, right? It is. I love this map a lot. That's why I'm playing tonight, and I'll be providing a camera, Absolutely. at least a first-person camera for you guys. Yeah, man. It's awesome. I'm I'm glad to see it. I'm glad you get the, the chance to play on your favorite map. It's a gorgeous map. Big as all hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another beautiful yeah. thing about it. So, uh, what's your favorite uh, part of this map? What is, what's your favorite area? Wow, that is a tough question. There are so yeah, that's many. a tough it's, one, man. It's so broad. It's it's almost like a bunch of little mini maps strewn together it into is. one big one, connected by roads and rolling hills, cliffs, and a river runs beautiful. through it all, man. It's, it's <laughs> that river, great, just such a great map. That river crossing is always one of the more interesting part of the ops. We'll see if anybody opts to do that tonight, because they don't actually have to. Uh, we've made a little bit of a change here, and Russia's going to be starting out in the southeast. How do you feel about that instead of them starting off in the northwest where they usually do? Well, it, I, I don't know if it always went that way. It used to be simpler when the, the mains were switched back in the day. Right, right. That, then we could have the Russians start on the, on the west side. But we'll just see how it goes. It'll be interesting. I'm sure they will still yeah. cross in the south and attack from the north if they can. Or at least make a presence a be known up there. there. I, don't, I, don't I, I would think. Stuff. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be interesting. I haven't thought about it actually until just now. <laughs> I'm posing those questions, and you're like, "Oh man, oh man." Now I have to think critically. <laughs> well, you like to. You really enjoy to just kind of be another boots on the ground kind of guy whenever you get into these ops. You don't really usually squad lead, as far as I've seen. Is is there a reason for that? You just like to be the the infantryman. Uh, yeah, exactly. I. Infantry is, is what I live for in this game, and I, as they update it and bring in new features all the time from vehicles to mortars to IEDs, that just makes it harder and harder to be an infantryman and not get blown to smithereens on your yeah. objective. So, it's I, I, I like the challenge, and I like to be infantry. Good, man. I like to see that. It's always, as always, from above, I, I get to, when you're playing in these, I get to root for you. The last time I got to root for you, you ended up wiping near half a squad up by Shipping Yard, as I recall. That was on Fishhook, I believe. And, oh, yeah, uh, I might have got four. Yeah, you got you four got four up there. Got me. Yep, you swept around on the south side, took down four guys without them knowing where you were. That was That was a good time. I always like rooting for you from above, but obviously uh tonight will be no different than that so you're starting out on militia tonight it looks like uh, holding a um, team yeah i am i am militia yeah and my commander yeah. is best pony Ooh, it's a good commander best pony really experienced commander he's always good no problems listening to him i'm sure you guys will probably have a good time defending a team i know for me it's always a little nerve-wracking on defense because you never know where people are going to come from at least yeah, that's my thoughts. Yep, it is. And and that's the best part. They can come from everywhere and a lot of times they're all gonna come at the same time. So Absolutely. You just gotta stay dug in and, and hold it together, you're gonna be just fine. Yeah, it's a big beautiful map we got here. Muff, I'm excited for you. I hope you have a good time. Yeah, and you know, get out there, kick some butt. 
do me proud. That's all I got to oh, say to you. I will. Do me proud. I will do you proud. <laughs> I'm going to try and give the viewers a show. You might get to see me one tap some people. Oh, man. Speaking of one taps, we had a, an interesting little little bet the other night, did we not? Oh, that was great. You can tell them about it if you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the other night, Jack Reynolds, one of our community members, trainee, he's going to be staff eventually, great guy. He... <laughs> We have kind of these famous muff one taps. He's he's known for kind of being the guy that can pull off these crazy one taps in situations. And we were joking around a little bit, and I I think somebody joked that Muff could hit a one tap from 500 meters with a slingshot. And Jack decided to test those limits. He said, you know, hey, what well, you know what? We'll go in the firing range, and we'll get out there, and. We'll see if you can hit a 500 meter one tap headshot with iron sights, and sure enough, Muff did it <laughs> twice actually because the first time he had his binocs in front of his face and you hit those, you hit his hand, yeah. right? Yeah, yep, I hit his hand. Oh and, man! The best part was I couldn't even see him through the post of the iron sight. He, it was he was so small mm -hmm. back there, and and I had the idea as we were going to just put him on a vehicle, put him on a red technical in the middle of the yep. of the range at 500 meters and he stood up there so i had to aim up quite a bit and i just couldn't see him at all i just had to kind of reference the technicals location and yeah and guess the height yeah so you had to worked out twice in a row actually yeah you had to pull that gun up high enough that you couldn't even couldn't even see him below it and then take that shot but what a beautiful shot it was i uh well, thank you <laughs> I had a good laugh. I was down there on the other side of the range watching, and I just saw his body crumple down off the technical, and and that was kind of the end of it. We we all went a little nuts, and uh, the bet was that Jack had to name himself whatever Muff wanted for a week, and uh, Muff decided to name him uh, Larue. So yeah, he's not quite bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love it. That was a good time. That was a good time. I love those sort that of was. things. It was funny. You know it was funny because we got such an instant audience for it too, you know? Oh yeah. And I'll tell you what, I didn't think there was any way I was going to hit that shot. I, I couldn't see him. He was so far out there. It was so hard to see. I mean, with iron sights, if you ever get the <laughs> chance, just try to even, even see the, even look at the, the targets, the white targets yep. down there. They're hard to see and hit. So. Yeah. Go out there, give it a try sometime with your buddies. It's uh it's a difficult thing to do. That's always difficult trying to get out there and hit those really long shots. But if you guys want to see the video of it, I believe it is posted up on Reddit, right? I think it's still up. There. Oh yeah, I think so. It's on yeah, the, the Join Squad, squad subreddit. subreddit. Yeah, go over there, check it out, give it a watch. It's a it's a good video. Digit recorded it and he did a great job with it. So really good stuff. Yeah, I watched it. You can but... see the the bullet shell, the casing fly out of the gun. And the... <laughs> <laughs> it hits him and he drops. There's, it's almost, you know, there's uh -huh. silence in between it, which is crazy. It was a long I shot. Love, I was proud of it. I love the uh, the quiet in between. There's the shot, and then there's a tick, and then boom, <laughs> his head explodes. Yeah. Oh that's man, crazy. It's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Well, I'm gonna let you get back to your team and get back to planning and everything, and I'm gonna start talking about what this op is, but. Thanks for joining me here, Muff. Thanks for talking with me, and good luck out there, man. Get oh, you bet. Thanks a lot. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Absolutely. Have a good one, bud. You too. All right. So if you don't know who that was, again, that was Muff Bandit, one of the wonderful managers here. Good guy. He's a good friend of mine, anyway. I like me some Muff Bandit. He's a funny guy. If you ever want to, you know, talk to one of the nicest admins that you'll ever come across, that's him right there. He's actually the manager of our admin team. Really great dude. So let's go on and uh, talk about what's going on in this actual operation tonight. So Rising Giant is played out on Gorodok, and it's mostly focused around the village of Akeem. And man, it is a big big open fields around this place it's a crazy thing to try to get into and actually got a little bit of time here so let's go ahead and go over the assets that we have in operation rising giant 
So, the militia get themselves two ARs, one LAT, one scout, and one medic per squad. They also get three technicals of any type, one MTLB and SVT, one Logi dump, and one FOB to use for their defenses. Russia gets two ARs, two LATs, one medic per squad. They also get two MTLB and SVTs and one transport truck. So the general operation goals, the militia have decided to lock down Akeem. They will be dropping a fob there and building up their defenses with that logy dump that they get, as well as with the NSVT. The Russians have been tasked with clearing out all militia, militia in Akeem. They will be trying to clear it out, make sure that every last man is dead, and take down the fob that is inside Akeem. All that will be happening on the map, and we will see how this plays out. So we have two rounds that we're going to be running tonight. And if we want, you know, I got a couple minutes here. I'm going to talk about some of the basics of squad ops and kind of what we stand for and what we are. So squad ops is a community that runs one life operations. And what that means is that everybody who's coming in here, they have agreed to a certain set of rules and that certain set of rules dictates what they can and cannot do. So these guys have agreed that they're not going to run on walls. They're not going to parkour off of roofs. They're not going to do any crazy jumping from roof to roof or anything like that. They try to keep things as realistic as they possibly can. Any shot that takes you down to the ground and gives you the revive icon on the map means that you are dead. A grenade doesn't matter what hits you. When you're down on the ground, you are dead. You respawn back at main, and you get to switch into admin cam and watch all the glorious chaos unfold from above. In all honesty, that's one of my favorite parts. I love seeing how the battle's going from above. It's one of my favorite things to witness. And, you know, being here commentating, obviously, I get to kind of check that out the entire time. Get to watch over from above and call out all the tactics and craziness that are happening. Good news is it looks like everybody's joining in here. So we should be able to get kicked off shortly as people are able to funnel themselves in. We've been doing a little little maintenance and cleaning some things up and trying some new things with the server. So getting all that sorted while getting everybody in, it's been a, a really fun time trying to see how it's going to be with hosting our own servers and running our own stuff. It's a really interesting experiment that we're all taking part in right now. But we're still going to bring you high-quality gameplay. We're still going to bring you some good stuff, and we hope that you guys have a good time watching. Yeah. As real as it gets for this kind of game, you know, Squad is uh, squad is not exactly a milsim. You know, it, it's a semi-realistic game, absolutely, but it is not quite a milsim. So we we put a little extra rules in to try to make sure that it stays fun and, and interesting. Oh yeah. Shamrocks saying no optics, only iron sights. Yes. We only allow iron sights. The only sort of optic, I guess you could call it that that we allow is the red dot site for the U S they are allowed to use that because that comes default on their M4s. But other than that, we do not allow any optics. You wonder if eventually they'll be able to implement some sort of mod that automatically makes it one life. Uh, Schmitty, so we actually have a team of wonderful mod devs that are chomping at the bit, waiting anxiously for mod support. And when mod support does come, they will absolutely be working on that. We're looking to automate a lot of the things that we do with mod support. So that mod team, it's led by Hanley, I believe, and great guy him and his team already putting together some really cool stuff. And whenever we get full mod support for the game, I can guarantee you that they're going to be looking for ways to optimize all this and make sure things go really well. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, you want to know more about squad ops or want to know more of what we're about or anything like that, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer. Yeah, Schmitty, that's that's absolutely it. As well as other stuff, you know, like making sure that when you spawn in on the map, 
the teams spawn in in the right locations and the vehicles that are there with them are the right ones for the operation. So even getting real granular like that to make sure that all of our ops are absolutely set to uh, 100% take off the way that they're supposed to. You know, this is all speculation, of course. We're hoping that those things are coming, but we're going to do our best. Uh, what is my middle name? You know, uh, uh, it's it's K. K is my middle name. I'm CMYK Matter, so that would be that would be K. My first name CMY, middle name K, last name Matter. There you go. <laughs> uh, Inner Divine, nice to see you, man. Glad to have you out here watching with us. Actually, we, I can go over some of the uh, some of the command structure that we got going on tonight. These commanders are the guys that really make some cool things happen. So you'll see all their glorious plans coming out. Our commanders tonight are Best Pony and Shadowed Ritual, and then for their capable squad leads on Best Pony side, or actually we'll go with Shadowed Ritual side first since I'm on that one. Shadowed Ritual will be leading the Russians on the first one, and he has the capable squad leads Hamlet, Nasty Nate, Tedish, and Expit. Right, and on the other side, for the Militia, led by Best Pony, and then his capable squad leads Captain Matt, Creeping, Odessa, and Gaming Brennan. So all fully capable guys, guys that know what they're doing, and they are very experienced with it. So they all know what they're doing and they will have no problem ordering their guys around and making sure that their guys get into the right places and do the right stuff. Uh, why don't I look at YouTube chat? I just haven't pulled it up yet. <laughs> I could do that at some point. I just haven't got it up yet. Do I eat breakfast? I typically try to at least do something, you know, try to do a little bit of breakfast, make sure that, Make sure that I get my day started off right. You know, breakfast, they say, is the most important meal of the day. I don't know that I necessarily buy it, but I try to eat breakfast in the morning. Got to gotta keep myself nourished. Mostly it's because, you know, you ever, you ever get that thing where, like, you don't eat for a little bit, you get a headache? It's not very fun. I, I get that every once in a while. Yeah, Toza Toro, Odessa is back. Odessa is traveling abroad right now along with Satan, and they are doing some cool stuff where they are. Uh, high caliber, no Karma Cut. Karma Cut is also traveling abroad right now, so... So no, ca no Karma Cut. No Karma Cut tonight. He's on vacation. He's out there just doing his thing, having a good time. And we hope he's having a good time, you know, for all of us, we all work pretty hard, so... We all try to make sure that this content that we bring to you guys is really fun. And hopefully, hopefully, he's having a good time while he's away. <laughs> Vacation overrated. I'm going to have to go ahead and disagree with you, man. I, I love me some vacation. Anytime I get to go away and kind of spend some time away from the, the humdrum, the normal drone of life i'm i'm always happy to do that I like to make sure that i get my time away and, and make sure that i kind of refresh every once in a while we just need to refresh for a little bit i know i do i might put on the bridge above it just in case okay so you guys checking out jay remick there We've got a lot of first person cams tonight Actually, how many do we have? Let's see We're here. Take the, the MTLB with the big gun on the right. I mean, we'll probably go... Looks like we have 10 first-person cams going on tonight. Crazy stuff. That is amazing to see. 10 first-person cams. These guys will be the ones who will be bringing you the boots on the ground, uh, views that you're seeing. You know, obviously, I'm the, the eye in the sky flying around up here and making sure that you get a good overview of the battle. But those guys who are down there, boots on the ground, you'll be seeing us cut to them every once in a while. Man, they're the ones who really make this thing amazing. I, I love to see what they do and how intense it gets for them. Because I know, for me at least, whenever I'm down there in the, the thick of battle, it's, 
some scary stuff sometimes. You know, you, you got bullets whizzing in over your head. You got vehicles cruising around, all this craziness happening. And, oh, man, it's crazy. Uh, Gunstones, are you spectating Russia or everyone? I'm spectating everyone, but I'm on the Russian uh, team. The uh, but we will be able to see everyone. So here, I'll break this down for you. So anybody that you see for the entire night that is blue is going to be Russian. I'm going to switch back and forth between teams in between rounds. So anybody you see tonight that's blue is going to be Russian. They're the attacking team. And anybody that's red is going to be militia. They're going to be the defending team at Akeem. So that's how that's going to work. You're going to see both of them. Anybody outlined in red, are you Rus or anybody outlined in blue, are you Russians? Anyone outlined in red, are your militia? So let's see. Somebody, Farmerstan6 asks if I like turtles. <laughs> oh, man. Do I like turtles? Uh, you know, the zombie kid, he loves those turtles. Me personally, you know, I, I find them interesting, but I like tortoises better because they're like, they're all big. Like Kanye the Giant, all big. <laughs> That's my feelings. I love the, I love tortoises. And they're like, aren't tortoises the ones that get like super old too? Oh man, that's so cool. Anyway, I want to live for 187 years. I want to be a tortoise. Uh, Slicing Edge asking, how does one get the ops tag? Saw the readme on the Discord, but would like to become a staff man member. Uh, you can ask in the Discord. The community team will help you out, but I'll go ahead and give you an answer right here because I'm on the community team as well. And how you get to be an ops member is becoming a reg or above. So reg staff managers and obviously our director have the ops tag. So becoming a regular is pretty much as simple as showing up to the operations, participating on our servers, being a part of the community, and just getting to know people over time. It takes a varying amount of time for each individual person. So, you know, there is no designated amount of time that it's going to take. But if you just show up, have fun, participate in the events, get to know people, participate on the server, and then you will end up getting a reg offer and you will get the ops tag. So the wing Jake saying, cool, so they actually plan a scheme of maneuver from beginning to end and brief it? Yes, absolutely they do. And actually, we can listen up here right now to Shadow Ritual giving the briefing. So I'm going to get you in here and shut up and let you guys listen. Squad 1 is going to take a transport truck and cross the river at this mark. Uh, they're going to cross the... They're going to cross the river, and they're going to head north. They're going to stage around this. The marks will work for me. There you go. They're going to uh, stage around that transport marker, and uh, it's up to the discretion of the uh, squad lead where exactly you're going to go. And you're basically going to sit tight and uh, either draw the attention of any uh, enemies that are on the north, or if it's empty... Or if it's not defended, because we're not thinking they're going to really defend the northern part of Akeem, since they're thinking we're just going to come in from the south, you're probably going to like blitz through and just try and open up at the northern part of Akeem. But uh, it all depends on how they uh, how they defend. Everybody else, uh, squads 2, 3, and 4 will be mounting up in MTOBs and staging at mound on... Marks don't want to work there. Goes. On the uh, BTR mark, squad... Two and four get MTOBs. Three will be riding in four's MTOB. Command will be riding in two's MTOB. As soon as the uh, northern troops are in place, we're going to start heading north with the MTOBs, taking like a uh, northeasterly route, and we're going to try and swing in from the east because we're not going to go in through those fields direct south of him because that's just going to get us murdered. Um, and that's about as far as we can plan because you know how plans work usually. Uh, are there any questions? Do you want the vehicle Negative. just to fall behind the infantry, or do you want them to kind of yeah. screen the, the open field? Uh, the infantry are going to be mo uh, sorry. The MTOBs will be behind the infantry most of the time. We're gonna you're mostly going to be looking out for there the enemy MTOB or the uh, the uh, hunt. There's probably going to be a hunter kill squad of, of techies. They get three techies of any kind. Uh, SPGs, uh, RDOR, the, uh, 
So their their priority is going to be vehicles and any infantry out in the open. And yeah, they're probably going to be staying behind the uh, the infantry most of the time. I really want to try, try and take this easterly route and just stay in the woods and try and give them as much cover as possible before we actually have to hard engage anywhere. All right, so you got to listen in there on Shadowed Ritual's plan. It looks like he's going to try to keep this a little bit loosey-goosey because, you know, plans never survive first contact. And let me see here if we're able to listen in on the militia briefing. Are they ready over there yet? Let's see. Grab it. I like rifle listening. Yeah, it looks like they, they are. So we're going to listen in on the militia briefing now. So get to hear both sides. Let's. I'll go ahead and shut up and let you guys listen. So one technical is going to be positioned in Kilo 3. On this marker, one technical is going to be positioned in the forest in uh, M6, M5, kind of on the border there. Then the third technical is going to be uh, in the farm woods area right up here in Kilo 7, kind of getting eyes on the Russians if they're coming from the south, seeing where they are. Uh, that technical is also going to have a scout who's going to get us additional eyes south. So, squad two, creeping squad. They are going to fend off the possible assault from the north. Creeping said that it would be a foolish and stupid move for any commander to take their forces over the northern bridge. And so his squad is tasked with fending off the possible assault since, you know, they might do it just to spite us or to try to make us look bad. Um, and squad three, Odessa's squad, is going to be here on the, uh, the town of Akeem defending various buildings from enemy assaults. They're going to be holed up. They're going to be helping dig defenses. We're going to get a few uh, guns up, going to get some sandbags up, get some oil barrels up, make this town nice and Russian-proof. Then, last but not least, Squad 4 is going to be kind of spread out in the woods, wooded areas all around. So they're going to get some people, you know, kind of up in this area, figuring out what's going on, get some people over here, and these that I can't mark. There we go. Get some people over here. Just, this is going to kind of pull a nice wide uh, defense all around, make sure the Russians can't sneak in on our flanks and get up close to us. Now, in the event we take contact, this plan will be altered radically, so be ready to receive new orders from your SL at any time, because the second we make contact, we're going to shuffle forces around to deal with it, so you might have to run three, four hundred meters across a whole town, across fields, through some woods. Just expect to move as the situation develops. Uh, and then the MTLB is going to be commanded by Squad 3, and it's going to park itself initially in... There's a little green metal corrugated area there that it can park itself facing west. But once we see the Russians, we're going to probably shuffle that around so it can engage them. As for mine, Squad 2 is probably going to mine the bridge. Well, not directly on the bridge, because that would be against the rules, but mine very close, uh, as close as they can get within the rules to one side or the other of that bridge north. Other mines should be placed kind of on major roadways, like say, we can get a mine out here with one of the technicals, possibly, if they have a scout with them, we can get a mine kind of on this intersection here, get a mine over there, just just pick a roadway where you think the enemy's going to be likely to travel over with those armored vehicles, and then put a mine down on it. And uh, make sure to, you know, radio and SL what they're doing in case we want to keep certain roads clear. Any questions? All right. If no one has any questions, then, uh, yeah, squad leads break them out. We're going to ready ourselves up and go live. Good luck. Have fun, everybody. All right, guys. All right, so you got to listen in on the militia plan a little bit there. Defenses, defense is always a little little interesting, especially whenever you got a lot of little buildings and things of that nature. I see some people talking about the objectives and kind of asking what's going on here. The general point of all of this is that the Russians here with their two MTLBs and their transport truck right back here will be trying to go and take over the village of Akim, which you can see on the northeast side of the map. It has that little red fob marker on it. They will try to wipe all militia off of that position, and then hopefully the Russians will be able to do that, or hopefully the militia will be able to defend Whichever, man. I'm just happy to have a good fight. That's all I want. I want to see a good fight. I want to see people having fun. And I want to see some good battles back and forth. Uh, Sadness Twitch saying he was hoping to get an impromptu basic going soon. Doesn't know how well it would work today. Uh, 
but they know some people are looking. Absolutely. So if you if you kind of post it in the Discord every once in a while that you're looking for people to put together an SOTT basic impromptu and get yourself an instructor lined up, anybody who has the SOTT tag that is staff, uh, get yourself an instructor lined up. They will be happy to put that on for you as long as you have a good number of people and you're able to work out an amicable time for everybody. So don't worry too much about that, but get in contact with staff. And if you don't know who to talk with on staff, you know, you can always hit up any of the community team members. So that's a good thing. It's always a good thing. So well, we got a little bit of time. Oh, wait, we've got a live time. They're going to be live at 124. Oh, man, that's 48 seconds. So we've got a little bit of time. Satan saying, hey, missing me. Oh, man, I miss you too, Puddin. I miss you too. My my heart, I'm reaching out across the seas. My heart. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you in here. So before we get live here, going to go over one of the Russian vehicles while we have a little bit of time. The Russian MTLB NSVT. This thing got that, it has that big NSVT gun mounted up on top of it. It's pretty slow. This thing with that tracked vehicle, it's slow. It doesn't handle well. It's pretty loud. It's clackety. But it does have that nice NSVT gun on it. It's got some good defenses on it. And also, the biggest thing about the NSVT MTLB, in my opinion, is that it has 19 person carrying capacity you can get people in there and truck them all around the map man i love seeing this thing get loaded up because if you get it really loaded up there's a lot of people that end up sitting up on the top of it and oh man i love the mtlb that thing is so cool it's hardly used i i feel like it's one of those vehicles that not a lot of people end up using simply because it is slow and clackety and loud but man it has a lot of potential if you use it correctly. Solo Wing Jake asking, are there dedicated vehicle operators in squad ops? Solo Wing Jake, there are not, but we do offer an SOTT vehicle training. We are live. I'm going to get back to that in a second. We are live. Want to make sure you guys know that the Russians are heading out. They're going to start getting into position for their attack. But yeah, so we have an SOTT vehicle training. And in that SOTT vehicle training, you can go in there and learn a lot about vehicles, how to operate them, ways to operate convoys, things of that nature. And if you are able to pass that, which, you know, if you're not able to pass it, it's mostly because you were screwing around or something like that. But if you pass that, you are more likely to be chosen as a vehicle operator in the operations. So that's what's up with SOTT vehicle and who's going to be operating that. We tend to try to give it to people who have completed SOTT basic or SOTT vehicle. It's an optional training. You don't have to take it, but it does help your chances in getting into a vehicle during an op. So we can see here the MTLB, one of them is rocketing up north here. It seems to be pushing nearly directly for Akeem right now. I imagine they're going to get at least one Southern force up here and try to see if they can get themselves in a good position to assault Akeem from the southeast. Off in the distance there, you can start to see some red names. That would be the militia waiting, ready to go. We'll see how this kicks off. Bring up the map for a second here. You can see the two MTLBs loaded up with troops have come up here to the north. And if you check on the map there, you can see the one little transport truck is going off to the west. Looks like they might be trying to take that as across the bridge, maybe, or bring it in from a different direction. We'll see how that goes. The MTLB is dismounting a bunch of guys here. Man, just this flurry of activity as they pop off the vehicles and move themselves over into various sectors here, trying to get themselves into position for whatever their commander has assigned them to do. Pretty crazy stuff. As you can see, Xbit there on your screen, running across, hanging out in the woods, trying to make sure everybody gets coordinated. Those MTLBs are pretty loud. You can hear them for quite a distance. So we'll see if they're able to able to kind of keep those disguised in their approach or not. Remick pushing up through the woods. 
He's a nasty Nate squad, I believe. Pushing up through those woods. Gonna see if they can get themselves in position. And they are actually not that far from a militia squad to their northwest. There's a militia squad that has pushed out. Oh yeah, they pushed out way south and they have come up to this barn location here. That is small basic. Looks like SM Pure Paradise and Jax have pushed out to this little barn location. And they have set up here. It looks like they might be just kind of a an early scouting party to try to get eyes on. Is the SL the only person with binoculars? You know, if there's a scout class, high caliber, that person will have binoculars as well. But otherwise, yes, SLs are the only ones with binoculars. But yeah, if there's a scout class in here, which on Militia, there is one per squad. So that's four additional binocs you get. So there you go. Schmitty saying watching this makes you want to go play, but also watch the op. <laughs> I understand it's hard to do both, but I'm just saying this is a limited time thing, you know, whereas, whereas squad's always there. Squad's always there kind of waiting in the background. Meanwhile, we only got this for a limited time. So maybe I'm biased, but I'm saying stick around here. <laughs> Hang out with me, man. Be my friend. You want to be my friend? think you want to so xbit and his boys kind of moving through the woods getting themselves ready it's crispy evan sma triton kind of spearheading this xbit on the far east moving up they're kind of moving through the woods hearing people call out that they that these woods are mostly clear so it looks like they're just kind of getting themselves in position they just called out that the Transport truck is taking some time to get into position, so they're going to be working on that. Let's see. That transport truck has gone out way around. You can see it on my map there, way out to the northwest, cruising by shipping yard up there. Wow. And you know what? I'm getting word that there is a mine at that north bridge, so if they don't clear it, if they don't clear that west side of the bridge where there's a mine... That's going to be real problematic. Big Yes is the one who dropped it over there. Oh, man. West side of that bridge, mined up. And if they shove that transport across the bridge without checking it first, that's going to be a lot of problems for them. That's going to be a big problem. You know, I just heard Shattered Ritual actually call out on command chat. Watch out for mines, everybody. Watch out for mines. And I'm hoping that his transport truck was listening to that. <laughs> See if we can find this mine here, western side of this bridge. Yeah, it's buried down in there. It's buried in here somewhere. Yeah, we'll see where it is. Oh, it looks like it's actually out on the road. Ah, there it is. There it is. That's all they see. This little red dot. Little red dot of doom. <laughs> little red dot of doom. If they cruise over that thing, say goodbye to your transport truck. I'm hearing mortars coming out now. It looks like the militia have actually set up mortars over there. I'm hearing them come out. Some explosions here and there. They might just be ranging right now. We'll see how that goes. Xbit moving up through those woods on the south. I don't think those mortars are hitting that close to him. No, they're kind of kind of off to his west a little bit. Pause right now. All right. So we're going to let you listen to Xbit here while he kind of moves through and let you listen in on the chatter that he has within his squad. But that was it, uh, almost my position, the west side of the, uh, the most western uh, MTLB. So let's go ahead and get into this tree line and start to north. I'm going to guess that scout's on the west. All right, uh, Alpha, move up to my pause. Incoming. More mortars out. Alpha, moving north. They don't get resupply. 
they get a thousand points, so they get about thirty-three mortars. So they're they're down six. Incoming. Keep moving. Yeah, they don't see us anymore. We start moving uh, north. So that that scout's got to be on the west. AMTL, hey, is that anywhere near you? Copy. That's uh just in front of me by like fifty meters. They're probably trying to zone in on you guys. You might want to disperse. Yeah, roll it back. Hey, still wouldn't get on us. So you got to listen in to expert there for a little bit, kind of get a an idea for some of the chatter that goes on in these operations. It's always interesting to me because a lot of these guys really do try to stick to what we teach in SOTT. So one of the big tenets of SOTT basic are the ABCs, the accuracy, brevity, and clarity. And they really do try to stick to that on these operations. They try to make sure that all their callouts are very accurate, that they are telling you exactly what they mean. They're brief so that they get the information out and let people yeah, process it. And they're clear, making sure that everything that's said is easily understandable. Well, so I don't like it's a good it. thing. Okay. I always like to always like to listen in to see what people are talking about and see what's going on. Nasty right. Nate here on the south side, pushing up here, straight across this field. You can see up in those woods, Jack Reynolds... Nuke Dukem. Looks like V1 as well out there. Just chilling. Cross this field from Nasty Nate, and they might see him if he pushes up there. They're a little scouting element. But do you think he saw it's us? A, uh, Let's see. Like Tedish has his binos sure, out. Sure, He's kind of peeking around eight. up there. Looks I mean, like they're trying to get some three. eyes. He sees a what technical be, within the village. We'll see if he's... Oh, no, it's it's out to the east, actually. So he does see that technical. That'll tip him off that they've got people in the area. Tedish pushing up on that far east side, I think. Looks like where he is. Yeah, here he is. You can see Tedish here in the center of my screen. Way out here. Way out here. Whole squad chilling out here. He's got those binos out. And he's glassing. He, if he looks real close, he might be able to see Jack Reynolds. Oh, no, Jack's just on the other side of a hill. woo Jack Reynolds. <laughs> In reference to the bet earlier that we talked about. <laughs> there he is, LaRue Jack Reynolds. I just noticed that. Wow, that is too good. That is too good. Oh, man. Satan, thanks for answering all these questions in chat. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, marksman, no go. We don't allow magnified optics. Uh, that's going to be a little rough. Magnified optics. Actually, Nasty Nate pushing across here. The MTLB rolling up. Jack Reynolds has to hear that thing. That thing clacks along so loud. There's no way he doesn't hear this. It looks like that transport squad to the northwest as well has stopped short of the bridge they did not get blown up by a mine so that's always good this mtlb being staffed by scare jew and cantador moving around we're hearing some little pot shots come out those might be from the west actually a three-person team yeah i can't really tell where those shots are coming from oh the mtlb opens up i think that killed jack did that kill jack I think it did. The MTLB opened up and just shot Jack Reynolds dead. The oh, no. Jack Reynolds, our first casualty, I believe, laying there. Poor Jack Reynolds. Poor LaRue. Rip. Rip in peace. Oh, that MTLB just lit him up. And now we've got some shots coming out on this technical. Running away to the north, that is Nuke Dukem. And A1 trying to get out of there. Running away. Let's see what kind of technical this is. That is actually the Dishka Techie. 
Yeah, look at that thing. So the Dishka Technical, it's definitely a fast little thing, but it does not have much in the way of defenses. It does have that big Dishka gun on the back of it, though, and that thing can lay down some hurt. Only holds five people, not great as far as capacity goes, but it can definitely lay some hurt down range if you know how to use it. Beautiful stuff. That Dishka Techie, a lot of people tend to misuse technicals, in my opinion. You need to use them as kind of a quick strike force, you know, swarm in packs of them. And, and it's pretty interesting stuff whenever you get a good swarm of technicals going. And you know what I'm seeing right here above all these blue troops? I'm seeing the lonely admin cam of Jack Reynolds flying around. <laughs> I feel a little bad for him. feel a little bad for him, but, you know, it'll happen. Server Air 404, Tetish's squad, pushing across this field here. Big open field. So those folks that were there with Jack Reynolds, Nuke Dukem, and, and Awant, they kind of took off north, so they have to know that this push is coming. So they at least have some sort of idea of what's going on. Schmitty, the graphics, real professional looking. Totally impressed. Well... I appreciate that, man. Uh, I make them. Pen controls them. So I really appreciate that. Pen's the guy behind there. Also, the the stuff around the screen, I believe Nash made kind of the overlay for the names and stuff. So great guy. You know, we've got a really good content creation team within the community. And I think we do a great job if I can toot my own horn. <laughs> Spread out, guys. Let's toot my own horn a little bit. You know, Mortar's got out. to do it every Mortar's once in a while. Out. Out 20 seconds. Solo saying, if that techie spots the squads in the open, they're in trouble. Absolutely. I think it's pulled off a little bit more to the north now. Doesn't look like it's going to be able to engage them. So they're just going to push across this field. This is a big old push. Look at this. Oh, Mortar's coming in now. That was a ranging shot. It was north of them. But it was on target, just a little bit north. So if they were anticipating them moving a little more... Uh, yep, the mortars are going to be coming in short. That's going to deter them from taking this direct path through the field, I would say. Uh, Super Splendid asking, how do you actually join the Ops community? It's community. All you have to do is check us out at squadops.gg, get all the information you need there on the website, and you can get into the Discord, be a part of us, talk to us, become our friends, even more than just hanging out with the me in the chat here yeah just keep yeah the the bot will be yeah, rolling yeah. around links every yeah, once in a while uh, to squadops.gg so that's where you want to go yeah, to find all the information get... about squad ops so feel like feel like these guys on the south are kind of making this nice wide arc push they're probably going to push into this going to push into this here and then see what they can do Muff, though, he has the MTLB, and it looks like he's getting ready. He's looking to the east. Does he have it parked in a good spot? I think he does. Yeah, he's got that thing parked in there, and he's kind of looking out over the field. He's looking to the east. You can see him here. Got that thing behind a fence, so it's going to be covered. If he's able to take some people down with this thing, oh, man, Muff Bandit. We got to talk to him before the op, and he seemed pretty excited to be running Gorodok. Now, the problem he's going to have is there's this big old hill in the way. There's a big hill, and it looks like he's not going to be able to get eyes on that push that's coming just over the hill. But he is in a good position. If they do push through these woods, he would be able to lay down some good fire. So we're hearing mortar shots coming in. I just heard Shadowed Ritual say that they are taking some heavy contact up here with those mortars. And he said that they lost a good number of people. They're pulling back. Let's see what happened up here. Oh, no, it wasn't Shattered Ritual. Yeah, it was Shattered Ritual taking... He was getting mortared. Yeah, Shattered Ritual getting mortared in the Northwest. Hamlet and his boys back and in, back in out. Oh, it was Hamlet's squad that got hit. Yeah, it was Hamlet's squad that was getting mortared. I'm sorry. I was instructing you guys poorly. Hamlet's squad getting hit. They're pulling back into the transport truck. 
Looks like they're going to get ready. Hendo, one tap. Hamley, a couple of the other guys mounting up in here. Looks like they're mounting up and getting ready to take off. They're pulling back. Looks like they're going to get out of dodge. They don't want to get hit by those mortars. I wonder if they're going to go back and try to rejoin the original force or how they're going to operate this. Because they seem to be heading away from the combat zone. So we'll check back with them later, see what happens, see where they're heading. All right, so Xbit and his crew still pushing through those woods, making that big, long flank. <laughs> that is that is the flank to end all flanks. Now, they did know that there was contact there to the southeast, and they haven't had any further contact for them. So we'll see if they are ready for this. It looks like they have actually prepared a squad in the northeast here. Captain Matt, Nuke Dukem. Shamrock, Everscience, Grim Reaper, FX1000, Gaming Brennan. Let's see who else we got. Part-time Ninja Turtle, Legit Gamer, and looks like Kenner. Or Kenneth. Kenneth, I'm sorry. All up here in the northeast. So this is actually the area that they're going to be defending. And they're going to try to make sure that the Russians don't get in here. This is actually the thing that they're defending right here in this building see if we can get in on it there we go so the fob or forward operating base it allows for the building of deployables so what it basically does is all of the sandbags all the sandbags and machine gun emplacements and mortars and things of that nature that they are able to build around this area this is the thing that allows them to do that. So if you don't know what an FOB is, that's what it is. Forward operating base. We're hearing the MTLB opening up here, though, on the east. Muff Bandit in the gunner position. Let's see what he sees. Try to peek out there. He's firing some shots in those woods. He must have seen somebody peeking up through. I just heard a mine pop. Did that get this entire squad? Ooh. All right, armored vehicle on the east, though, taking shots from Muff Bandit in the MTLB, putting the hurt on it. You can see him there on your screen lighting it up. That thing is hurt. It is on fire. It's backing out. Got machine guns opening up here as well. That is the actual the MTLB from Russia taking some shots. You can see it is down to orange health. It's hurt. They've got a second MTLB up here, though. We'll see if they're able to put in some more fire. Oh, man. Muff putting in hurt on that one as well. He's shoving them back. Muff Bandit, one man with an MTLB in the dream, laying down the hurt on this eastern side of Akeem. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful shots coming in. Yeah, you can see these things down at Orange Health having a hard time. Muff Bandit saying, you want to roll vehicles on me? I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to allow it. I just, I just don't feel like it today. So up here, up here on the east, we've got some people pushing in. Lucid takes a shot. He's bleeding. They're running into this force, actually. Couple people going down here. Benbot, rival helicopter going down. This push getting countered as they try to come in from the northeast. This whole squad sitting in the woods, led by Captain Matt. Looks like they were ready for him. A couple guys out in the woods here. Tedish trying to move up through these this concealment here. Not very good cover through these brush, but it's great concealment. So he's trying to get himself through here and see if he can put in put in some good shots. Try to counter. This little push that they ran into. This is a good little firefight that they got into here. Right, Tedish peeking out. He's got FX-1000 not far from him in a tree. FX-1000 might see him. Looks like he's ready. Oh, no! Man, Boogie takes him down just in time. Tedish was about to push out, and Boogie took him down. Everscience gets hit. Mortars raining in on the southeast from the militia. More shots go out. Everscience goes down. 
Tedish and his little two-man crew that he's got with him pushing in from the north. There's taking down some militia, it. trying to get a better position. More shots going in. Shamrock getting hurt. Grim Reaper getting hurt. This little squad is is doing a good job with Tedish at the helm. Blazing fire. Laying in that field. They put in some shots. He bleeds. Shamrock goes down. Grim Reaper getting shot as well. He's running away. Another guy off to his east here a little bit. Kevin and a couple other guys putting in shots. And they have effectively counteracted this force that was waiting up in the woods. That was a good little flank by Tedish, a smart move to know that they took initial contact in the woods, push a little bit north, get ourselves in this concealment, and operate on the flank. And that's what they did. Good little maneuver. Very interesting stuff to see. So Muff, back in that MTLB, laying out some fire. Might see people out there to the northeast. Nuke Dukem goes down in the field. Shot off of the Dishkateki. Grim Reaper and Evwan mount up in it and try to run away. Muff is putting in some shots. The mortars go out. That was really close to Tedish. Doesn't manage to kill him, but those mortars were very, very on, very on target. He's bandaging. He's hurt. He's trying to get away. I can only imagine that they're going to put out a couple more mortars here. Google Track saying it's never a balanced game with Tedish in it. That's true. That man, that's a talented man right there. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Muff still putting out shots. Looks like he's getting ready. He's lining up. Those two MTLBs have just kind of been stunted down there, you know? Muff put the shots on them early, and uh, they've just kind of been stunted. They haven't been able to move up since they're so damaged. So you can see they've still got this force up here, commanded by Tedish. And they actually have... I hadn't seen this yet. So this looks to be Hamlet's squad. The guys that you saw on the other side of the bridge, way to the northwest, way earlier, now pushing up from the south. One tap man bringing in a lot or the transport truck. Is he supposed to be bait? What is this? He rockets up through... Some minds blow. Oh man, one tap cruising into the village, and he's like, You know what? It's not that bad, guys. There's not much contact here. <laughs> what is this? What is one tap doing? He cruises through, he links up, and he's now pushing into the village on his own. Is I'm guessing he was trying to clear from mines or something. I'm not sure what he was doing. He, he drives right into the village. He drives right in. <laughs> Captain Matt, not sure what he's seeing, puts in some shots on one tap. What is happening? Finally, a lag goes in on him. He's he just drove through the village. He gets out. What is happening? <laughs> One tap pushes out around the building. Silent death close to him. I don't know what's going on. He's holding here. I just need to follow what happens here because I was not expecting that. I did not see that coming in a million years. <laughs> He, he did say Leroy. He put some shots in. He actually hurt somebody. He hurts Harrison, too. Kind of pulls back a little bit. What? What? <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm so confused. One tap just shoved himself in here all alone. Drove directly through Akeem and, and got out. Not unscathed, but, you know, he, he made it out. Big ta big yes on your screen there. He sees one tap's man squad. They open up some shots on one tap himself, but he's still alive. That background's making it hard. I can't even believe that he's still alive in here. He's still holding this position. And we've got forces moving in from the northwest now, a couple forces moving in from the northeast. The MTLB, or that was a disc attack he actually, I think, opening up. Oh no, Xbit gets hit. He goes down. Oh, man. The MTLB over on the east opening up again. Muff laying in some shots. They've also got another gun over oh, here scared. opening up on it. Oh, the S or the techie here, the disc attack, just took a hard shot. Captain Matt trying to get it out of there. They've got contacts real close. Captain Matt trying to get it away. Kevin, Shattered Ritual, 
just on the other side of the wall. Shadow Ritual Command throws a grenade over, hits Captain Matt. Captain Matt throws another grenade back his way. They run inside, and they are able to be safe. Shattered Ritual Command right up in the front, leading from the front. That's what I like to see sometimes, man. Oh, Captain Matt bleeds out. He goes down. That's a squad lead down for Militia. We've got some shots raining in from the south. Hanley goes down as he tries to push up. That's a squad lead down for Russia. Hendo pushing up here. Silent Death in the building. Iron Tyrant pushing up to his building right now. Some more shots coming in from the east. Lots of stuff happening right now. The big push is on, and it looks like this is the initial fighting force in the southwest trying to get up to this position and make sure that they get some good contact out. Silent Death puts out a grenade to the south. It blows up. It kills Miyamoto. Great grenade. Oh, man. A rocket comes in and kills one tap man who was right there on the Dishka emplacement. Leroy Jenkins goes down. Unfortunate. That was Cool Breeze that took him out. Clean rocket from him. Silent Death still holding that building. And now this force is pulling back. They seem to be retreating. Hendo, Iron Tyrant, Zed, and Rate pulling away. Tedish up on the north side, still moving in with his crew. Let's see. Tedish just moving in from the north. He's got basically the remnants of one squad up here with Saloon number 12, Merrill, Hancock, and Triptez. He's got Mad to the Jack, and we've got shots coming in. Tedish laying here. Putting some shots in on the village proper. Get you down in here and see what he sees. Looks like, looks like he's not going to be able to see much. There's a, there's a lot of stuff in the way, but he's opening up still. Laying in some contact and making sure that his presence is known. He wants them to know that they are not safe from this side at all. We do have a flanking force from Militia working in here. Creeping, Torched, Kahuna, Carpy, Iron Feast. Pushing around from the north, your view there on Carpy pushing through this field. They're going to come in on the north side of Tedish if they keep pushing in on the east a little bit. We'll see. You can see Tedish's squad in the back there, creeping towards and Carpy, leading the way, pushing up. They might try to get a good flank on. We'll see how that goes. That's crazy. Man. We'll see if this flank actually works out from them. These guys, creeping squad, was stationed way out to the northwest early in the round. Oh, and we just got some shots in town. Bird person goes down. I believe that was Tedish's squad. Somebody in that took him down. Bird person going down in the village. Oh, a rocket comes in on the south, and it takes down two. That was one of the MTLBs that just got blown up. That was Degas and Soberpud going down in that MTFB that you see sitting right there. Got blown up. I'm not sure who did that. I think it might have been Muffin Sightless. Not sure who did that. But you can see Muff Bandit with that MTLB still holding strong. He's had it since the beginning of the match. And he's the one who weakened up those two MTLBs early in it. He's got that MTLB kind of parked off here to the east. And he's just sitting there. Another rocket comes out. That hits somewhere around Goobzor in the northwest here. Goobzor definitely hurt. Scared you around there, too. Shots coming in on the southwest as a push comes in. Rate moving through the field, gets hit. They're trying to push in here. Hendo in the front of your screen gets hit real bad. He's bleeding. He's got a bandage pronto. He dies. He bled out. Iron Tyrant taking shots as he tries to cross the field. Another one. Rate goes down in the field. Zed getting hit as well he's yeah, bleeding out iron tyrant bleeding out zed goes down iron tyrant the only one that survived that push muff bandit pushing in with the mtlb sightless driving it for him as they roll in looks like they are gonna get eyes on this situation the only one that made it in from that push is the iron tyrant he's the only one who managed to make it shots come raining in from the south from muff bandit tedish squad Tedish squad up to the north getting flanked hard by Carpy and Creeping. Here comes the flank. We were talking about it earlier. They take down Sexy Ton. They're pushing through. Kahuna gets a little bit injured. Shots coming back in. 
Tedish gets hit. He's bleeding. Iron Feast puts some shots in on him. They definitely know that he's there. We'll see what happens. Iron Feast has to bandage. Tedish has to bandage. Shots come back in on Tedish from Carpy. Carpy goes down to Tedish. Tedish takes him out. Tedish OP. Tedish unbalanced. <laughs> all right, uh, this is four. Tedish just called out, this is four. I am all alone. He's the only guy left in his squad. Only guy left from that. They all got taken out in that flank. Oh, there's a grenade. It comes in and it wipes out Tedish. That is the end of squad four. And that is it. Man, Muff Bandit still on the south. Got that MTLB looking north. See what he can see. He's got himself a good position here. Iron Tyrant still alive somehow. The only one who survived that push. And things are looking dire for the Russians. They've lost a lot of squads trying to make it in here. We'll see if they're able to clear this out. There is still a lot of militia left. Shots coming in from Iron Tyrant. He downs one. Or No, yes, he downed one. Racine whiffs a rocket, puts it into the wall, doesn't manage to get it out there. Unfortunate for him. And shots come in and the Iron Tyrant goes down. So that's the southern push taken out. Shattered Ritual Command pushing in here. Sneaky Sniper. Kevin pushing in as well. Lots of guys here on the on the center location. The MTLB rolling up around to the southwest. Silent Death still out to the west as well. The Militia holding really strong. Get some of these names out of the way for you guys so you can see. Look at all these Militia sitting in and around the FOB location, making sure that nothing happens to their precious FOBs. Some shots come in. They now know the position of Shattered Ritual. That is command for the Russian forces. He's hit. He's bleeding a little bit, but he's bandaging up. He's going to be okay, it looks like, for now. Looks like he has a medic with him, too. Heal him up. Heal him up real good. You can see him there on your screen. He's got those binos out, trying to make sure he's doing well. A couple shots put in from his east a little bit. Three-man force stuck on this building. We'll see if they're able to do anything with it. That is Sneaky Sniper, Shattered Ritual, and Kevin with him. And a whole lot of militia to his south. Kevin, an LAT, he gets the rocket. He looks like he's ready. He hears the MTLB down there. A grenade comes in. They all manage to survive it. They're hurt a little bit. They pull inside the building. Another grenade comes in. They're still doing okay in the building. All patching up. Some more shots coming in as well. MTLB from Muff Bandit and Sightless opening up. Pull forward a foot. Oh, wow. This is, a, this is a real tough time. This is a real tough time. Shattered Ritual copy, copy. just with his two guys trying to push in. Kevin pushes out to the west, and he goes down. He gets shot immediately as he tried to peek that corner. That was from somebody over this way, somebody who's up in this building. That is Thurman Merman, uh, who was up in that building. MTLB now opening up, penetrating through the front, the fence. Yeah, the friends. What is that? <laughs> yeah, they hit me with it. The MTLB actually hit. It managed to hit Shattered Ritual, yeah, piercing bandage. through that wall. Yeah, we need to get out of here. Let's go north. Are these the last two guys left for Russia? Oh, nope. We've got we've got a squad pushing in through here. We've got a fire team, actually, pushing in through here. That's Mad to the Jack, Meryl Saloon number 12, and John Hancock. So Shattered Ritual, not the last guy alive. No, 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 no. They're moving out. They're getting ready to try to shift positions. They know that that MTLB is just going to creep in on them, and they don't have any LATs here. A frag round goes in. A couple shots coming back in this way. Looks like that's from Thurman Merman again up in that tower. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's an honor system for people tuning in while the the game is going on. These guys are all in here because they want a they want a good experience. Oh, here they come! Shadow Ritual pushing out. Muff Bandit firing on him from the MTLB. Shots come in. Oh man! Shadow Ritual lives, but his buddy goes down. I'm out of bandages. Shadow Ritual pulls into oh, this building. God. He somehow uh, lived. Command's gonna go down. I'm out of he's bleeding out. He's just called out over radio. I'm out of bandages. Command is going down eventually and tried to give out his last orders. I'm going to try, try and take as many as I can with me. And he goes down pretty much immediately. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a good little push. That was a good little push. Silent Death came in and just 
just took them out. So now, for Russia, their hopes and dreams all rest on the shoulders of these four guys out here. Baxter saying, hope everybody is fair and doesn't cheat by watching the stream. You know, one, it wouldn't give you much of an advantage if you actually watch the stream because it's still only one life. And if somebody sees you first, you go down. But it's really obvious if people are ghosting, there is at least one staff member uh, or a regular in every squad. So we can kind of understand if those things are happening. And also these guys are in here because they want a realistic and tactical teamwork experience that's really intense and these people do not want to have that experience ruined so yeah i would definitely say nobody's gonna be nobody's gonna be ghosting or anything like that gunstone's asking if they're switching attacking or defending roles after this yep they'll swap them around round two we'll flip this around anybody who was on russia will now be on militia and militia will be on russia So, big yes, just hanging out on that peninsula northwest of village. He's just, he's just enjoying himself. He's just, you know, having a rest, enjoying the stream. It's close to the river, I think. Yeah, he's just kind of hanging out there, you know, enjoying the sights. He's like, man, Gordok's really pretty. <laughs> Gordok's real pretty. That's it's nice this time of year, you know. <laughs> Care a lot saying you thought this would be round two. Nope, this is round one. We got a whole nother round after this, so don't you go away. After this round finishes up, we got a whole nother round. And what's going on right now? These four guys are all that's left of the Russian push. And look at this militia force that's still around up here. Tons of guys still ready and raring. And not only tons of guys, where is he? Cruising around in this MTLB here. Muff Bandit and Sightless doing their thing. MTLB still in great shape. Muff's been cruising in this thing all game with Sightless as his driver. Doing some good work, man. They hurt the other MTLBs early, made sure that they got taken out. Stopped some infantry pushes. Really powerful work with this MTLB. Good stuff from him and Sightless. That's what I like to see. Baxter. You know, we really don't keep this competitive at all. We're not trying to be a competitive group. This is mostly for fun. Oh, but Silent Death. Silent Death coming in close. He peeks the corner. He takes one down, and he goes down himself. Now they know. Now the position is known. A shot came in on Muff Bandit and Sightless. The position is known. Muff's going to get some shots lined up here. Oh, there it goes. Muff and Sightless go down. Boom. That was a good shot that came out. Oh, man. Man, what an explosion. Oh, Squad is such a pretty game. <laughs> Squad is such a pretty game. Oh, they're, they're moving now. I think that was Merrill who took that shot. Merrill or Saloon, one of the two. But they took him out. Down goes the MTLB. Muff Bandit and Sightless putting in some good work that round, but eventually taken out. Here comes some shot. Oh, and saloon number 12 goes down. Or no, that was John Hancock. I, I apologize. So it's Merrill and saloon number 12 pushing up through here. The only two Russians left. Saloon number 12 in the lead. Merrill right behind him. They might get peaked on this corner here. You can see somebody down there. Shots come in. Grenade hits close to them, but they're all right. Just scared them. Scared him a little bit. Here comes a peek from up the road. We don't have time to waste. Right. We know exactly Racine and Harrison pushing that corner. They know exactly where they are. Racine peeks the road. But he pulls back. Harrison getting ready. They put out some smoke, and it looks like they're going to peek and, and try to run. They know that their position has been given away. Racine or Harrison pushing up here. Oh, shots come in. Take down Saloon. Last one alive here, Merrill. And he gets shot down from the building. That was Thurman Merman taking him out. And that's going to be GG. There's the call. GG to everybody involved. That is it. Man. That was crazy. That was a crazy first round. 
Oh, so we are not done. That was just the first round. We're going to roll the map. We're going to flip these rolls. Russia becomes militia. Militia becomes Russia. And we get to see how this happens from the other side. We'll see the, the new plans that come in from Shattered Ritual. We'll see the other perspective from Best Pony, new plans. And we'll see what they do. But we're going to take ourselves a little break here, run you some trailers. These are going to show off some of the SOTT things that we run. Really cool stuff. So take a look at these trailers while we take ourselves a little break. We'll see you after this.